Welcome to the lecture on mathematical finance. In the last lecture, we discussed in detail the relation between attainable American and European contingent claims. In particular, we have seen that the amount of money needed by a seller of an American contingent claim to build up a hedging strategy is encoded into the time zero value of the corresponding Snell envelope. On the other hand, from a buyer's perspective, the maximal payoff he can get out from an, from an American contingent claim by following an optimal exercise strategy is encoded into an optimal stopping problem which coincides in that particular situation with the time zero uh, value of the corresponding Snell envelope as well. So this gives us already a glimpse of what should be a fair price of an American contingent claim such that neither the buyer nor the seller uh, has an arbitrage opportunity. So and that's the topic of that lecture to discuss what is the fair price of an American contingent claim. So before doing that, uh, let me add here one remark which will be important in the definition of an arbitrage free price of an American contingent claim. So I give myself uh, this process CT, which should be non-negative and adapted, meaning an American contingent claim. And I give myself an admissible stopping time, meaning a stopping time which is bounded from above by capital T. And then I claim that the following object, C tau divided by S naught tau multiplied by S naught T, is a European contingent claim. So why is that the case? So by lemma 1.4e, we know that the ratio C tor divided by S not tor is F tor measurable. And moreover, we know by lemma 1.4 C, since tor is bounded from above by capital T, that the tor path, so the sigma algebra of the tor path, is contained in the sigma algebra F capital T. Hence, that ratio C tor divided by S not tor is an F capital T measurable random variable and multiplying it with an FT measurable random variable S not capital T, remember this price process is an adapted process, give rise here to a non-negative F capital T measurable random variable, hence a European contingent claim. And you can interpret that American contingent claim or this European contingent claim in the following way. So at time tau, you take the payoff of your American contingent claim and you invest it into the numerator at that time point. And that's one over S not tor is the number of shares you can buy at that particular time point. And then you keep that portfolio until the time of maturity. And then you sell that whole portfolio and that's the total payoff you get out from that European contingent claim. And you see why we have defined that, namely if we now consider the discounted American, uh, European contingent claim, then it coincides with the discounted American contingent claim. So and this will be important in the following definition of the arbitrage-free price of an American contingent claim. So it's a little bit lengthy as you see, but let's go through it step by step. So first of all, I give myself a d-dimensional financial market model as usual, and I denote that by S bar. And moreover, I give myself an American contingent claim C. Then I call a real number pi A of C, which should be non-negative, an arbitrage free price of the American contingent claim C if the following holds true. First of all, that number, so that price should not be too high. And this is encoded in the definition as follows. There should exist a stopping time from the set of all admissible stopping time, as well as an arbitrage free price of the corresponding European contingent claim at that stopping time tau. Meaning, I consider exactly this European contingent claim C tau divided by S naught tau multiplied by S naught T, which we just defined or discussed. And we take the corresponding discounted arbitrage free price of it. And by multiplying it with the value of the numerator at that 
and time point zero, we get the arbitrage reprise of this so constructed European Union contingent claim. So, and from that set, we take also one um, um, element, and then we, the following should hold true, namely this um, American contingent claim or the price of it should be bounded from above by that number pi. On the other hand, this number pi a of c should not be too low, and this is encoded into the following condition. There should exist no stopping time tau prime, such that this number pi a of c is strictly less than any arbitrage reprise of the corresponding European contingent claim. And uh, the discounted arbitrage free price of an American contingent claim I simply denote by this lengthy uh, formula pi a of this discounted American contingent claim. So, and here's the first observation. Well, there's a clear relation between the um, arbitrage free price of an American contingent claim and the discounted arbitrage free price of the American contingent claim. So you see you take this number pi a of c and this is the same as taking this discounted American contingent claim or this discounted arbitrage free price of the uh, American contingent claim and multiplying it by the time zero value of the numerator. So and if you are not happy with this second condition, which you see here in the definition of an arbitrage free price, you can also formulate that equivalently as follows. So this is the same as asking that for all stopping times, tau prime taken from the set of all admissible stopping time, there should exist a pi prime taken from the set of all uh, arbitrage free prices of the corresponding European contingent claim such that uh, pi prime is lower bound of this number pi a of c. So that's why this two condition rules out on the one hand an arbitrage opportunity for the seller and on the other hand an arbitrage opportunity for the buyer. So and here's the first and so to say most important theorem of that section. So I give myself in a financial market model consisting of the price process of our numeraire and this d-dimensional price processes of our risky, sec uh, risky securities and here denote that as usual by a spa and I would like to assume that this financial market model is free of arbitrage and moreover I give myself an attainable American contingent claim meaning we will find for that American contingent claim a hedging strategy and then it holds true that first of all, this arbitrage free price pi a of c is uniquely determined and it is given by the following formula. So pi a of c is, as we have seen, s naught naught times the discounted arbitrage free price of the American contingent claim, which is given in terms of that uh, optimal stopping problem, namely in terms of the supremum over all admissible stopping times of this expected value um, under an equivalent martingale measure Q of this ratio C tau divided by S not tau. And we have already seen by theorem 4.4b that that optimal stopping problem is independent of the choice of the equivalent martingale measure. So let us have a look at the proof of that theorem, which is not so complicated. So first of all, since we assume that our financial market model is free of arbitrage, we can apply the first fundamental theorem of asset prices, which tells us that the set of all equivalent martingale measures is non-empty. And as a first step, I would like to convince myself that for every admissible stopping time tau, the expected value under an equivalent martingale measure Q of the discounted American contingent claim evaluated at that stopping time tau is finite. So why is that the case? That's rather straightforward. 
by um, writing a one complicated by simply introducing here that indicator function um, over all values this admissible stopping time may can take on and by using the linearity of the expected value under this measure q which allows me to take that sum out from the expected value and uh, we can now bound that quantity trivially from above by simply replacing that indicator function by one since as uh, the discounted american contingent claim is non-negative hence we end up with this following formula namely the sum from zero up to capital t of the expected value under the equivalent martingale measure q of this discounted american contingent claim at time point t but by theorem 4.4a, taking advantage of the fact that the American contingent claim is attainable, we know that this expected value is finite. Hence, also this finite sum of finite values is finite, and this clearly proves um, the integrability of that um, uh, discounted American contingent claim at that at any admissible stopping time. So why is that useful? Well, remember that the set of all uh, European contingent uh, arbitrage reprises of the European contingent claim C tor divided by S naught tor times S T is characterized by the set of all expected values of the discounted Amer European contingent claim, which coincide by the discounted American contingent claim at the stopping time, provided that that expectation is finite. But here we convinced ourselves that this expectation is finite for any tall and any equivalent Martingale measure. Hence, we have that representation of that set of all discounted arbitrage reprises of the corresponding European contingent claim. And to simplify notation, let me simply abbreviate the um, discounted American uh, discounted arbitrage reprise of the American contingent claim by pi a in the sequel. So what we should check now? So we should check two things. We should check um, or see what consequences it has uh, from condition one on pi a and as well on condition two. So let's start with the first condition. So this first condition can now be written as follows. So you see here we have given that representation of that set pi of C tor divided by S naught tor. And you see here in the definition map we should pick and um, there should exist one value pi in that set such that we have an upper bound. So this can now be encoded in the following way. There exists a Q in the set of all equivalent Martingale measures such that this number pi A is bounded from above by, uh, so there should, sorry, there should exist two things, um, this measure Q and the stopping time such that pi A is bounded from above by the expected value under Q of C tor divided by S naught tor. And then I can make that even larger by simply taking the supremum over all admissible stopping times. So this gives me clearly an upper bound on the um, discounted arbitrage reprise of the American contingent claim. So what do we uh, now uh, about that American contingent claim. Well, since it's attainable, we know that there exists a hedging strategy denoted here by H bar and as well as a stopping time tor star taken from the set of all admissible stopping times such that the following two things holds true. First of all, the discounted value process dominates the discounted American contingent claim P almost surely and since P is equivalent to Q, here also Q almost surely. And moreover, at that particular time point, tor star, equality should hold true. And here as well, Q almost truly. And now we can ad take advantage of the fact that by lemma uh, or by theorem 4.4b, we know that the optimal stopping problem is independent of the choice 
of the equivalent Martin Kinesha. So we know that the supremum over all tau taken from the set of admissible stopping time of that expected value on a Q of this discounted American contingent claim evaluated at tau is equal to the same um, optimization problem but here with respect to this measure Q prime. And moreover we also know that that optimal stopping problem coincides with the value um, of uh, uh, this expected um, uh, expectation under this measure Q prime at the stopping time tall star which we take or which we have given to us by the hedging strategy. So how would we proceed now? So we fix exactly that Q which such that this condition is satisfied. So Q is now fixed. We have a freedom here to choose Q prime. And um, so now I would like to bring the second condition into the picture. So and this I would like to do in that equivalent formulation. So we should prove that for all stopping times there exists this pi prime in that set such that pi prime is lower bound of uh, this arbitrage free price. So this means as the following. So by setting, since this holds true for all um, stopping times, I also can pick the stopping time tau star. And then the, diff the second condition tells me that there exists a Q prime taken from the set of all equivalent martingale measures such that the expected value under Q prime of the discounted American contingent claim at that particular stopping time tau star is a lower bound for my arbitrage free price or this discounted arbitrage free price pi of a. So what have we gained from that observation? So well, first of all, we know that this optimal stopping problem, which we have convinced ourselves here, coincides with that expected value under Q prime of um, this discounted American contingent claim at that stopping time tau star. Now we have seen that this is a lower bound, bound for pi of a. On the other hand, we also know that pi of a is bounded from above by that quantity, by that optimal stopping problem with respect to the measure Q. So that's this upper bound. But now take an advantage of the fact that the optimal stopping problem is independent of the choice of the equivalent martingale measure, we get here the following equality, namely that this optimal stopping problem coincide with that optimal stopping problem we have, where we have here again this measure Q prime. Now, now what we read here, the left hand side is the stop, optimal stopping problem under Q prime, the right hand side as well, meaning all these inequalities should be actually equalities. Hence, we found two things. First of all, this price, um, this discounted arbitrage free price of uh, the American contingent claim is unique and it is given by that value over here. And this is exactly what was claimed in the theorem. So let me discuss here a version of the call put parity for American call and put options. And you will see in contrast to the European call put uh, parity, equality will not hold anymore. So but let's do that step by step. So I give myself here a simpler financial market model, namely one which only consists of the price process of our risk-free security and the price process of our risky security. And I would like to assume in addition uh, to the arbitrage freeness of it, that it is also complete. And moreover, I would like to impose on the numerator the additional condition that it is an increasing process in time. So and then I would like to consider uh, an American call option. Let me remind you that's nothing else but the process positive part of this price process S1 T minus K where K is the strike price which is strictly positive 
And likewise, the American put option is the process given by the positive part of k minus s1 of t. So and let so by the previous theorem we know that the arbitrage free price of the call option is given in terms of the optimal stopping problem. And likewise we know that the arbitrage free price of the American put option is given in the corresponding optimal stopping problem. And these values of the optimal stopping problem are independent of the choice of the equivalent Martingale measure, but due to the fact that we assume that this model should be complete, we know that there exists a unique equivalent Martingale measure. So now let, let us denote by uh, uh, that call the Snell envelope of the discounted American contingent claim, whereas by that put I denote the Snell envelope of the um, um, corresponding uh, discounted uh, um, American put option and the corresponding um, stopping times tor star put and tor star pull their uh, call are defined as the first time where the Snell envelope C call T coincide with the corresponding discounted American call option and likewise a C star put is defined as a first time point where the Snell envelope C put T coincides with the corresponding discounted um, American put option. So and by theorem 4.43 we have seen that um, Tor star call and Tor star put are both optimal stopping times. Um, and on the other hand, now and, and this now allows us to do the following. So what I would like to do is the following. So I take that optimal stopping problem. I know that this optimal stopping problem coincides with S not not times the expected value under Q of this discounted American call option at the time point and this random time point tor star call. Right? So that's this in representation or taking advantage of the fact that that random variable over here is an optimal stopping time. So and by plugging in exactly that optimal, so that stopping time, which occurs here in that supremum over all admissible stopping time, into that formula, I clearly get a lower bound because here's the supremum over all, by picking one, I get here a lower bound, meaning with this minus sign, I get an upper bound. So by doing so, I get the following upper bound, namely that this difference between the arbitrage free price of the American call and put option is bounded from above by um, S0, which occurs on both sides, and the expected value under Q, and what is left here, the difference between the American call option and the uh, American put option at the time point T star call. And if you now figure out these two cases, when one of these two is zero, you see clearly that you can write that in the following form, namely that's just the discounted price process at time point tor star call minus this ratio um, strike price divided by the numerator evaluated at tor star call. So now I would like to do two things. First of all, I would like to take advantage of the fact that this underlying um, price process of the numerator is increasing. And this allows me to bound that quantity S not T from above by uh, S not tor uh, T star call from above by S not capital T. So by making that quantity larger, this ratio gets smaller and this minus sign and indeed get an upper bound. And by linearity, the upper bound is given by that um, formula over here. So the expected value under this equivalent Martingale measure of the ratio strike price divided by the price of the numerator at maturity. 
So moreover, I can do the following. So now we have to compute here, you see, I have to compute the expected value um, of this stopped price process with respect to that measure Q. So let's do that as a side computation. So for any stopping time, tau, by using the optimal stopping problem, I know also that the stop process is, um, is a um, martingale. So hence I can write that um, random variable over here also by using the definition of the conditional expectation as the expected value and using the martingale property as the expected value. Now, so here I have not used the martingale property by, by, by now. I simply wrote tau as tau minimum capital T. And since this is an admissible stopping time, that's clearly the same. And then I simply wrote here the definition of the condition expectation. And now I apply the uh, Martingale property for the stopped Martingale, which allows me to, um, to rewrite on this condition expectation in terms of the initial value of our process, namely x1 naught. And so I end up with that expected value. But due to um, the assumption that our initial filtration F0 is trivial, I know that this price process is deterministic, so I can also bring that out. So and this I do exactly at that stage. So I replace that expected value over here by X1 naught and by dividing that quantity by S0 naught, I simply get here z value as one not out and you clearly see that here an s not not term is missing i would like to add that later on and by the same reasoning i can also go back to this optimization problem here and by plugging in this time uh, tau star and um, uh, put so then i can write that optimal stopping problem simply as the expected value under Q of this discounted American put option at the time tau star put. This is the definition or this was one consequence of the, no, this was the definition of an optimal stopping time multiplied by the value of the numerator. And on that side, I simply take that value which is contained in the set as one uh, instance of that su uh, supremum and by that doing so that term gets smaller. So in that way I get a lower bound. So the lower bound is simply given then as the value as not not multiplied by the expected value under Q of the price process x1 at or the discounted price process evaluated at this optimal stopping time tau star put minus this ratio of the strike price and the numerator evaluated at this time point tau star put. And now again, I use take advantage of the fact that the numerator is an increasing process simply by replacing z by s naught naught. I make that term smaller. One divided by something smaller gets larger with a minus sign, I get a lower bound. And you see the lower bound then is F0 measurable. Hence, I can take at S0, 0 out of the expected value. K is a constant. I also can take that out from the expected value. So you see clearly it cancels out and you end up with this term K here. And for the other terms, for the remaining expected value, you proceed as we argued before and you then get back simply X1 naught, which by that factor over here simplifies to the term S1 naught. Hence, we obtain the following bound. The difference between the arbitrage free price of an American call option and an American put option is bounded from below by this term S1 naught minus K and it's bounded from above by the expression S1 naught minus S1 0, 0 multiplied by that expected value. So in that, you see, in, in the, for European call and put options, we had exactly the same expression, however, with equality signs over here. So let us come now to the last theorem, which I would like to present to you. And this is 
in the spirit and to some extent the corresponding uh, generalization of a theorem which we already have seen for a European Union contingent claim. Namely here I would like to consider a financial market model which is arbitrage free. I don't assume that it is complete. And um, I consider an American contingent claim which I denote here by C and I would like to assume that the corresponding discounted American contingent claim is integrable meaning that the ratio CT divided by S not T is in L1P for any time point t in our index set and then the following things uh, two things holds true so first of all and uh, the set of all um, values given by the corresponding snell envelope of our um, discounted american contingent claim with respect to the corresponding equivalent martingale measure evaluated at time point zero is first of all non-empty and second an interval and moreover uh, we will show that the set of all american or all discounted american no the set of all discounted arbitrage reprises of the american call option or this american contingent claim c contains exactly that set of all initial values of the corresponding numeraire with respect to uh, the choice of the equivalent martingale measure and actually even more holds true namely it's not only a subset actually equality holds true as we have seen in the uh, context of european Union contingent claim the drawback here is the proof is rather involved so the backward direction that's why i would like to um, um, not present it here in the lecture so let us have a look at that proof so we would like to address first that um, part a so what is the first observation well since we assume that our underlying financial market model is free of arbitrage we know that the set of equivalent martingale measures is non-empty second from the condition we imposed on the discounted american contingent claim namely that it is integrable with respect to p we also know that it is integrable with respect to q so but this allows us to construct then for every discounted american contingent claim or for that discounted american contingent claim with respect to every uh, equivalent martingale measure q the corresponding Snell envelope. This clearly then shows that the set of all initial values of this um, Snell envelope it, um, parametrized here by the um, choice of the equivalent Martingale measure is non-empty. So now let us focus on the proof why is that set an interval. So and for that I do the following. I give myself two instances of um, equivalent martingale measures q1 and q2 and then i define for any parameter alpha in the set 0 1 the following measure q alpha which is defined as alpha q1 plus 1 minus alpha q2 and clearly q alpha is a probability measure moreover and this we have seen in the corresponding proof uh, for the European version of that theorem that Q alpha is contained in the set of all equivalent martingale measures. Moreover, if I give myself now a stopping time tau from the set of all admissible stopping times, the map which maps alpha to the expected value under this measure Q alpha of this discounted American contingent claim evaluated at that particular stopping time tau which can be written due to that linearity of this measure as alpha times that expected value plus one minus alpha uh, times that expected value is clearly an affine linear function. But this has the following consequence, namely if I now define a map where I take here in addition the supremum over all stopping times and I call that function f of alpha, 
which is a pointwise supremum of f hein linear function, it is clear that this function is convex. And moreover, it's bounded, due to the fact that all these expected values are finite, uh, due to the observation we did over here. And uh, a continuous and bounded, uh, a convex and bounded function has to be continuous. So we can now take advantage of the intermediate value theorem, which tells us that for a continuous function, every value between f0 and f1 are attained. So hence, uh, by, uh, by using theorem 4.3, uh, which tells us that the optimal stopping problem is the solution of that optimal stopping problem or the evaluation of that optimal stopping problem is given in terms of the initial value of the corresponding Snell envelope plus the fact, so here we had in the definition of, or in the statement of theorem we had 4.3, we had here the expected value of that quantity, but due to the fact that our filtration F0 is trivial, we know that that quantity is um, deterministic, that's why the expected value um, uh, disappeared here. So we have that representation, and from that we immediately obtain that this interval is simply given by the interval uh, Z0Q1, Z0Q2, meaning this whole interval is contained uh, in uh, that set over here. And since we can do that for any Q1, Q2 taken from the set of all equivalent Martingale measure, this clearly shows that that set is indeed an interval. What we don't know is whether the boundary points are contained in that interval or not. So whether that's an open, open interval or a closed interval or half open or half closed. That's not uh, stated here. So let me now come to the second part of that theorem. Namely, I would like to show that this set of initial values of this uh, Snell envelope encoded by the value of or the choice of the equivalent Martingale measure is contained in the set of all um, discounted arbitrage-free prices of the American contingent claim. So, um, so here we take again advantage of the fact that by theorem 4.3 we know that the following stopping time, so tau star, which was defined as the infimum over all time points, where the Snell envelope ZQT coincides with this discounted American contingent claim, is an optimal stopping time. So theorem 4.1b uh, 4 told us that this object is a stopping time, and by 4.43 we know it's also an optimal stopping time. And moreover, we know by that theorem that this optimal stopping problem uh, coincides with the initial value of the corresponding numerator. And here again, I took advantage of the fact that the uh, filtration F0 or the sigma algebra F0 is trivial. Um, and moreover, we know the following that the expected value under this measure Q of this discounted um, American contingent claim evaluated at that stopping time tau star is finite by the same reasoning we used before. Namely, I can simply uh, condition on the value of, or not condition, but I inc uh, include here the indicator function that the value of tau star equals to t. Then I use linearity to bring that sum out. And then since that quantity is non-negative, I can bounce that from above by dropping that indicator function. Then I end up at that expression. But by assumption, we know that that quantity is integrable. Hence, we also know that that quantity is integrable under this equivalent Martingale measure Q. And this tells me that that object is, um, has finite expectation to that random variable. Hence, we can now apply the theorem 2.19, which tells us that that value over here, so that value which we see here, 
is an element in the set of all and discounted arbitrage reprises of the corresponding European contingent claim C tau divided by S not tau multiplied by S not uh, S not capital T. So hence we have checked here indeed this value Z not Q uh, is bounded from above by that value and that is exactly the statement or condition one from the definition of an arbitrage free price for an American contingent claim or more precisely a discounted arbitrage free price. So now let us check the second condition and here we assume uh, that there exists the stopping time tau prime such that uh, uh, Z0Q is strictly less than this expected value for every equivalent martingale measure um, Q prime taken from the set of all equivalent martingale measures. But then you see, well, we know by that observation over here that Z0 is equal to that optimal stopping problem. But on the other hand, we know that that quantity here dominates strictly that optimal stopping problem, which is clearly a contradiction. Hence also condition two is satisfied. And this clearly shows that this element, Z0Q, is contained in the set of all discounted arbitrage reprises. And this clearly then shows that uh, this set over here is contained in that set. And by that I would like to conclude that lecture.